Evening, evening. Ask Obsidian, episode three. So you think your dog is stubborn? I'll, I'll, I'll wait for this to uh, ping up on people's things. And I really want to get into why dogs are not stubborn and what's more likely that's happening. Because there's a couple of things. And there are uh, both the things that make dogs not stubborn are, in my opinion, fairly interesting. <clears throat> why is Facebook not telling me? Come on, Facebook. Okay. So you think your dog is stubborn is the title of this. Firstly, the dog's not stubborn. Absolutely, there's no way in hell. The reason I'm so sure about this is because dogs, to be stubborn, you've got to be able to rationalize a situation. So let's say you've fallen out with your wife or husband or mum or whoever. You've got to be able to say, I'm not going to do X because this happened previously. That's a rational line of thinking. Dogs don't have that. They don't have the capacity to rationalize situations. We know this. They're not episodic, uh, they're not episodic learners. They're associative learners. So there's not really any way that they can be stubborn. If you think they are, there's two things that you're most likely experiencing. So let's say recall. You, you let your dog off, and he's fine, and everything's great, and then he just suddenly stops coming back. The reason that it happens is either the dog doesn't understand what you want, which in the example I've just given is unlikely because I just said he was coming back. So let's say he never comes back. You let the dog off and he don't come back. He probably doesn't understand that you want him to return back to you because you've not taught him a position. You've not taught him a behavior chain to bring him back. How would he know? The fact that you know is not relevant to him or her. Um, so you've got to make, it, make sure that you're being clear with the dog what, what you're looking for in their behaviors. Because if you're not, then it's just not going to do it. The second thing that you might be competing, hey Helen, the second thing that you might be comp hey Sarah, competing with is um, something called competing motivators. Now, I take my dog out. I want to be the motivation to make him work. We talk about engagement and handler engagement and you know all that jazz. Unfortunately, there are other motivators out in the world. You know, like Percy on his bike, or the kid playing football, or the dog charging around. They're all motivating to a dog because, of well, them three things, prey drive kicks in, they want to go and chase. <clears throat> if you become a higher motivator than the other things, stubbornness will very quickly disappear. Um, because the fact that you are a competing motivator means your dog has to make the decision of, do I go back to him and get a piece of kibble, or a ball, or a tug? Or do I go over there and chase the bike? Which I don't get to do very often, so that's really fun. You've got to prove these behaviors. So let's use recall as an example. Um, you start in a completely empty field, and you train your recall. The dog goes out on the long line, you give him a tug, he comes back, you mark and reward. People then, from there, go to the fucking beach, or a dog park if you're in America, or you know something like that. And surprise, surprise, let me let my dog out. She's being really annoying. Two seconds. Surprise, surprise. The, um... Hey, Jesse. The dog doesn't come back because there's now 300 dogs on the beach charging around like an idiot. And you expect the dog to behave just as it did on an empty field. So stubbornness is either lack of understanding in training i.e. you're not communicating clearly with your dog what you want to do, or competing motivators. If it's not one of them two things, it is one of them two things. If any of you disagree with this, stick it in the comments and I'll explain why I think you're wrong. And I'm always right. I'm not always right, but I like to try. Okay, let's get into questions. This is going to be a Q&A after all. I'm five minutes in, I've not answered anything. Oh, after. <clears throat> so... It's a long one. How much behavior can you put down to breed and how much to learn in history? For example, I know a lot of Huskies through having Dex, they can't be let off lead due to prey drive, etc. I made sure I worked hard on recall and still do. I absolutely did not want a dog that couldn't be let off lead. Husky owners would say that because he's half German Shepherd, that's why he can do it. He's got prey drive and has killed small animals, but I'm aware of that and manage it as much as possible, but also teach lever, etc. Bog off. 
But if he catches something, I have no chance. Okay. So how much... The question... Correct me if I'm wrong, Helen. But I think the question is... How much of a dog's behaviour is down to learning experience and learning associations and how much is down to breed temperament? So there's a thing. The answer is, is different in every dog. You know, dogs could not have a recall because of breed or dogs could not have a recall because of um, training or lack therefore of. <coughs> there's something, there's a, there's a test for puppies um, where you can... You're basically testing what they're going to be like as an adult. Because there's been no training put in here at six weeks, seven weeks, you're testing them completely on temperament. It's called Volhard's Aptitude Test. Um, and it's really interesting. So you mark the puppy on sight sensitivity, sound sensitivity, uh, willingness to retrieve, and various other things. It'll tell you a lot about what their dog's like. And there are breeds that have got higher traits than others. Like, like, like Helen said, Huskies renowned for having massive prey drive and not great recall. Beagles are the same. Um, collies, herding instincts. They're going to have herding instincts. They're a herding dog. So you've got to take it into account, but you also can't let it you know, dictate what you do and don't do with your dog. If you're a husky, there's no reason you can't let it off lead. You just might have to fucking work a bit harder to train it. It's ridiculous that people are going, oh, I can't do this because I have this breed. Your dog might be inherently dog aggressive. My shepherd's not very dog friendly, but I can still have her off lead around other dogs because of training. Impulse control. Don't go near other dogs. Don't be an idiot. Um, so yeah, Helen, the answer to your question is it depends massively on the dog. There's some huskies that all of their reason for not coming back is training, and there's some that it's 90% of its genetic traits. People don't speak enough about genetic traits, and it's so important. You know, like, I want my dog to be a protection dog because it's a German shepherd. Cool. Is it cut out for this? And it's quite often no. What are you doing? Go well, later. Ian Watson. Hi, pal. Took your advice on getting toys for them to keep busy and also walking them 50 miles a day. Still howling for action. Two huskies. Only left alone for three hours at time. Ian, did you ask me a question yesterday? If so, you're absolutely wanting way too many results way too quickly. Dog training is based on repetition of behavior to create new habit. Say you're walking them 15 miles a day. Like I said yesterday, you could run a husky for 60 miles and it's not going to give a fuck. You need to mentally stimulate them. Putting toys on the floor is not mentally stimulating. So you need to do things like play scent games or teach them to uh, mark on a specific scent or advanced obedience. Or You know, there's, there's a million things you can do. If you're stuck for ideas, drop me a message and we'll, we can go over some. Um, but yeah, they're only left three hours alone at a time. The other thing that this could be is separation anxiety. In which case, three hours is too long for them at the moment, so they're going to howl to bring you back, because when they're howling, you come back. So you've got to teach them a new association to you leaving, which is very, very long-winded and worth it in the end. So, that's that. Nicole Robbins, hello. Tobias Courier, hello. Okay, questions. Bailey's out of wine glass again. Where's my questions? How do I teach leave it to a dog? So I teach, I teach the leave command or the out command or whatever the hell you want to call it with a tug. Um, it's obviously quite a high value reward for a lot of dogs. You play with the tug and play and play and play and play and play. In prey drive, so this is just a game. This is, there's nothing more and nothing less to it than we're playing a game. And then after some time of playing, you hold the tug as still as you possibly can. So you've got it like this and you just hold it still. Say nothing. Eventually the dog will let go. It'll try and pull and pull and pull. And eventually they'll let go. As soon as they do let go, the game starts again. So the tug moves. If you don't move it straight away, the dog's like, fuck this, I'm not going to let go of that because it's going to take it off me. I want them to understand that by letting go, the game starts again. And if you're in protection training, by the way, any of you, don't use this method because you want to teach your dog to push bite onto a static tug, which is... Something for another day. But yeah, that's that's how I would do it. My dog barks at every dog that we see when we're out, but he's fine in the house. Okay. This is quite probably... The, no, it's not probably at all. This is definitely the most common thing that I get through these doors. Dog reactivity. And it's, Khaleesi, Benidus. 
and it's happening more and more because dogs are not getting well socialized, they're not spending enough time outside, they're not getting adequate exercise and mental stimulation. Our society is just not well balanced to dogs at the moment. I'm hoping it'll change in time, but we'll see. So dog reactivity, I'm sure we, did we go over this yesterday? Maybe we did, but I'm just gonna go over it mega briefly. Put the dog in a position where it's not reacting, mark and reward the behavior. The other dog has to stay away. The first dog moves towards the second dog, not the other way around. Mark and reward the behavior. If the dog starts kicking off, you've gone over something called threshold. Um, if you've gone over threshold, you're gonna get nothing because I hear really commonly, oh, but my dog won't take a treat when we're out and he's barking at people. And it's like, yeah, no fucking shit, because he's far more interested in going over to that dog. So you need to be below that. Tobias, your views on prong collars and shock collars. Um, for 99% of owners, pet owners, I don't think they have a place at all. I think this because to use them well, well firstly, prong collars were not designed to add correction. Prong collars were designed to increase drive. So we're using them wrong already. Um, E-collars... I don't think they've got a place because you can cause so much damage so so quickly with them that the reason pet clients want to use them is because they think, oh, I'll stick this on my dog. When he doesn't come back, I'll zap him. And what happens then is your dog's now fucking terrified of the tree that it was stood next to because it has no idea where it came from. People don't condition them properly, so then the dog becomes collar smart and knows where it's on. Yeah, I think for 99% of pet owners, they, they don't have a place. Um, however, I also think positive punishment for eighty percent of pet owners doesn't have a place because the majority of problems I see are based on shit relationship with their dogs. Sorry, guys. That's someone that usually watches the live feeds saying he's missing it. Um, yeah, the majority of problems I see are based on a shit relationship to start with. Um, so it's important for that to be addressed, you know, especially before you start putting any positive punishment in. But yeah, that's my stance. I think for 99% of people, the, the shit. Um, right, let's go into the group. Dog training advice. Hey, Rue. Hey, Joe. We've answered that. We've answered that. Jesse Cartwright, is it possible to change training from treat training to click training in a very food-driven dog with any chance of success? If not, am I going to stick with the treat training, the new pup as well? I'm trying to think ahead of new puppy coming home without giving them issues that haven't arisen yet. Jesse, explain to me your definition as a, of treat training and clicker training. Because clicker training is a term for reward marker training, marker being a reward marker. So just ping me a little sentence about what you are calling both of them things and I'll address it. Tobias Courier, e-collars are used as quick fixes. Exactly, and that's my biggest issue with them. Because that quick fix generally, I'm not saying they don't have a place. People, are, This is very controversial and people are going to cry about it, but they have a place, in my opinion. This is why I don't think they're suitable for most people, because they want the quick fix. As soon as you're looking for a quick fix, you fucking failed in dog training. Sorry, but that's the way it is. People need to understand that it takes time and patience, you know, and compassion in training and understanding of the dog and communication issues. And without understanding that, they're just zapping their dog. You don't have a fucking clue why. So it obviously was that tree that's next to me. And then, you know, they maybe eventually come back, but they don't know why they're coming back. Or there's no association built. <clears throat> Hi, Jay. I had a good one with Safi. She's doing well. Thanks for holding on to the hoodie. No problem, buddy. I hope you're enjoying the hoodie. Tyler, hello. Nice to see you on here. Mark with a yes or a good and reward with a treat. Works well. I will switch to marking with a clicker and eventually get result without treats. Okay, yeah, so you're doing marker training. You're just doing verbal, verbal marker instead of a clicker marker. Um, it makes no difference. If you want to associate to a clicker instead of verbal, most people want to do the other way because it's it's easier to carry your voice around than it is a clicker. Um, you just say the word yes or good or whatever you want to use and then feed the dog. Or yes, play with the dog. Yes, throw a ball. All that marker is is a conversation between you and the dog that what you're doing right in this second when I 
produce this marker, say it or click or whatever you want to do, is something that I want you to do more often. What on earth are you doing? Um, I have a bored mouth with a bug off. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so you won't be stuck on food. I think people get stuck on this, that if you use food in training or a ball or anything, they're like, yeah, but I don't want to carry chicken around with me for the rest of my life. It's like, cool. You're building association at this point. So you build the association that, for example, sitting down brings you chicken. So as soon as you've built this enough, you start fading the reward out. Maybe you only reward three and five times or five and seven times or, you know. But yeah, just fade that reward out and, and eventually you'll be there. Tobias, as soon as you look for a quick fix, you need to take your dog to a rescue and buy a dead goldfish. I could not fucking agree more. Good man. I like it. Yeah, you're, you're bang on, dude. You know, it's the same issue I have with puppies. My puppy's doing this wrong. It's hard work. Buy a fucking fish, you know. They're easy. Dogs are hard work, but you know this already. Got it, thanks. Jesse, I hope that was clear enough. Tyler, what would you say the best way to introduce the equal to your dog is? Um, it needs conditioning, so, you know, it doesn't understand that when he's got this on, it hurts, and when he hasn't, it doesn't. And it depends massively what it's for. I'm going to just assume this is a black and white question and, you know, not related to serious or anything because things change based on where you are. But basically, you would put the collar on and just leave it on for six weeks. Most people will put a dummy collar on, you know, it hasn't got pins in or anything. Um, and then you put something with it to pair it to. So, like, it is for serious. <laughs> I'm going to stop answering my question, Tyler. Why do you want to put an equal on serious? <laughs> I want to know what you want to put it on for. I'll answer your question again in a minute. Tobias, practice and patience makes perfect. Yes. And there's a really um, cheesy saying in there. Practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. Um, which is true, you know, you start teaching a heel position badly and no matter how often you do it, it's still going to be wrong. <laughs> Tyler, come on. Why do you want serious in an e-collar? If it's because he's not listening to you, go back to basics. I saw your obedience video the other day, dude. It was, it was good. You know why. I assume that's because he's being a bellend. Tyler, we'll discuss this on the group later, but how would you condition an e-collar? You put the e-collar on and leave it on and never press the button. And then you pair it with something like, you know, a first saver or a collar or a smell or anything. Then you start using it because then the dog doesn't associate having the collar on with what's, what's happening. Now he's good. Hmm. He looks good in that video, man. Like, that was really good. To save them no obedience with him. But it takes time, dude. It takes time. And I know you don't like all the happy shit, but fortunately it's part and parcel of the game, like it or not. Okay, let's go back to the group. Andy Bate, hello. How are you doing, dude? Andy, you've been on a few of these. Should you not be working? Okay, I can get on the group. Tyler, did that answer your question as well? I have a two-year-old last up, so cross Pomeranian that wheeze whenever anyone comes in the house looking for advice. Oh, okay. Um, dogs peeing on humans approaching is uh, usually overexcitement. So the people just have to become mega boring. You know, like five people walk in and the dog gets no interaction. It'll soon stop peeing. I've been doing OB, as you know, working on focus, but I'd like to understand the method as I've seen a happy, happy way you and Andrea do, and it's grown on me. Yes, I like it, Tyler. We're, uh, we're really happy, happy in our training because the bottom line is, especially in obedience, if the dog doesn't want to do it, you know, if it's there out of duress, then as soon as you bring a decoy in the field or you know, another dog or a distraction, a motivator of some sort, the dog's like, fuck this guy. He's just got me out of duress. Oh, it's way more fun. If you teach Sirius that he wants to be here in heel position, doing work, you know, and having fun and kicking off. Hey, Obsidian. Um, hey, Acob, Acob. I don't know how to pronounce your name, dude. I'm sorry. 
Um, if you teach him that he wants to be here doing obedience, then as soon as, hey, bro, hey, hey, <laughs> that, that, you know, you bring the deacon on the field, like Scott comes on the field or something, and he's like, cool, I want to go and buy that guy, but I also want to be here because it brings me loads of cool shit. Does that make sense, Dad? Yes, but you know how it goes. Oh, I know, Andy, I know. They're long nights, dude. Long nights. Okay, have I missed anything so far? Dawn, hello. Nick, hey, how's Jumbo doing, dude? Sandra, hello. Rosie, Rue, Joe. Okay, I think I said hello to you guys. Okay, Acob, Acob. Hey, if you have a question, pop it in the thing. If you don't have a question, enjoy the show. I'm just trying to think if I have anything to rant about as well. I usually have some something to fucking moan about. Um, latest rants. Oh, I guess my only rant at the moment is it's fucking freezing. It's really, really cold. Isn't it? We were doing obedience earlier. I just wanted to kill myself. Just leave it on him. Yeah, leave it on him for four to six weeks because otherwise he's going to become collar smart. And then when you've got the collar on, it'll work really well. And when you haven't got the collar on, he'll be like, see you, bye, Ty. So yeah, leave it on, don't use it. Who else is in the forum? That's not for this Q&A. Okay, back to the group. Oh, and go and hit the like button, guys, as well, because Facebook bums me when I get more likes and it pushes it to more people, which helps me. <coughs> right, we just answered the last subpoena in the house. Okay, Jody Louise. I have an eight-week-old border collie who I'd like to teach concepts of fetch. I've already taught her to tug. Whenever I let her win, she runs off with the toy. Oh. Yes, I have six weeks. Patience, man, patience. Oh, thanks for the likes, guys. I like it. <laughs> like a kid with a new toy, yeah. Um, if you don't condition it, Ty, he's literally going to mug you off as soon as you take it off. So that four, week, four weeks that you're going to spend now will save you three years down the line. It was a massive exaggeration, but you get the point. Um, I want to teach my collie fetch, but when I leave the tug, she runs away with it. Okay. Firstly, she's eight weeks old. Slow the fuck down. Charlotte, hey. Tyler, give me a sec. <laughs> um, no, not even a little bit. Don't use it at all. Because if you use it once, he's going to be like, oh, it's this thing that causes me pain. I need him to not understand... I need him to think that the conflict's coming from you, really. Here and there in the four weeks. No, not here and there. Go and talk to um, other Jay about this as well, because she's going to tell you the same thing. Andrea probably as well. She will. I don't think she's in tonight. Muz was in last night. He'd probably tell you the same thing as well. Um, eight-week-old puppy learning to retrieve. The, the problem here is that it's an eight-week-old puppy. But let's take an older, older dog. I back-chain my fetch or retrieve or whatever you want to call it. So I teach it through engagement. So we play tug. I let go of the tug. The dog runs away. And I turn into a three-year-old girl getting the dog back to me. You know, clapping and clicking and whistling and singing. Must just... <laughs> yeah, that's why Muzz has loads of conflict with his dog, though. You don't want that. Muzz, why are you not watching this? I hope you watch it on repeat. We love you, man. Um, so, yeah, I, as soon as the dog comes back, we play again. If you repeat this over a long enough time... The dog starts understanding that when I drop, when I get given this tug, if I go and ram it into my dad's stomach again, we get to play. Lo and behold, what you've just taught, hey Simon, hey Lindsay, what you've just taught is the back end of a retrieve. So the dog has the object and it's bringing it to you. All you have to teach then is the dog to go out to the object. It's called back chaining, which is basically teaching a behavior backwards. Um, I don't have another good example, but hey. So yeah, that's how I teach you. I teach you through back chaining. Um, there's a video Michael Ellis does on engagement, and he talks about this in that. Rosie Hodgkinson. Maybe a dumb question. I have no experience with a clicker at all, but I'm currently teaching my local recall, which is sort of good at so far, to say it's in the early days. Would a clicker help in the training? Yes. A clicker, don't get stuck on the fact that it's a clicker either, because I don't use a clicker, but I do clicker train, per se. A clicker is just, what the fuck are you doing? This is not what's going to happen. We're going to go over there and lie down. A clicker is a communication tool for you to say to your dog, good job, I like what you're doing, do that more often. 
So I'm not going to use recall because it's a bit more complex, but let's use sit. You ask the dog to sit. As soon as their ass hits the floor, food. You ask the dog to sit, food. You've got to condition the clicker though, just like I was talking to Ty about conditioning the e collar. So you've got to click the clicker, feed the dog. Click the clicker, feed the dog. Click the clicker, feed the dog. You get the fucking picture. Over and over and over and over and over and over. You don't have to ask the dog to do anything yet. And it's where people get stuck. They're like, oh, but he's not doing anything. Cool, we'll fix that in a minute. Then you ask for a simple behavior that he knows. Sit, food, down, food. The dog starts rationalizing. No, the dog doesn't start rationalizing. The dog starts associating. When you click this, I get fed. How do I make her click that clicker? But you can use a word. You know, you could use yes or good or, I don't know, glass, mug. It really doesn't matter what you use. It's just a sound. The reason clickers are handy is because it's the identical sound every time. So more advanced things. You teach heel position. Dog pivots around. Poof. The reason they're handy there is because you're looking for a specific point in time and space. That sounded very Doctor Who-ish. Is it Doctor Who? Um, you know, you're looking for this position. When you reach here is when the reward comes. Not when you stay here for 10 minutes. And it's how you start teaching speed. You know, speed and position changes and, and all that jazz. But in short, yeah, a clicker is definitely useful. Um, oh, sugar ant. Fucking words, come on. In my email list. Uh, Rosie, I think you're already on the email list. If so, I'm going to write an email about clicker training. I prefer to call reward. No, not. Jesus. This is what I get when I try and multitask. It's just horrendous. Um, marker training. Sorry. How do I pin this thing? Why can't I pin it? Oh, pin comment. Okay, so at the top of the comments... I don't know which way it is, again. Um, there's a link. Go to it, put your email in the box, and I get send you cool emails every day. I think they're cool, and I think they're funny, but I'm going to because I'm big-headed. So do I leave it on him or take it off and put it on him every day? Uh, if you've got a dummy e-collar, you could probably leave it on him. If you're going to use a normal e-collar, because they've got the electrodes in them, rotate every four hours, otherwise he's going to get collar sore. Started with the clicker and moved with the word yes. Yeah, Andy, exactly the same. Yeah, I used to click train all the time, but then I realized I was a spastic and I couldn't carry a clicker around with me because I'd leave it in the car or in the drawer or in the van or on a site somewhere. So I also moved to the word yes. I use yes for a reward marker and I use good for a continuation marker. If anyone wants to know about what they are, then just ask. But otherwise, I'm not going to go into it. Jay, where can I watch the video of you and my friend Kat? Tobias, do you mean Kat Clark? If so... Uh, I might upload that tonight. It'll go live tomorrow. The next couple of days, keep an eye on the page. It's not live yet. Um, it will be going live very soon. Um, that was a great trainer talk episode. She's incredibly knowledgeable. So I'm going to start Agility of the New Year with him for fun. Hopefully a click would help there too. Yes, I'm in the email list. Rosie, cool. I'm glad you're in the email list. If you're all not in the email list, go and get in there because I want you in there. Oh, Misha's watching, my fiance's watching. Are you sat upstairs watching my live stream? Um, agility, Rosie, that trainer talk I've just been talking to Tobias about, go and watch that when it goes live, because she's an agility trainer. Oh, and Jack, my shih tzu, is watching, apparently. One of my dogs, after he's been fed, has started to get aggressive after he's eaten with other dogs, especially the males. As soon as he's finished eating, if there's another dog, he'll attack, so I have to feed him on his own put him outside to cool off and bring him back in. Okay, what he's doing is resource guarding. Don't ever punish his behavior. If you punish it, basically, he's finishing his food and he's like, fuck, want some more food. He'll start guarding the other dog's food. If you, there's conflict there. I want your food. If you also put conflict in, I want that dog's food and now you're shouting at me. Mega conflict. He'll start biting you as well. Um, I think you're doing the right thing, Lindsay. Take him away. Let him calm down. Try and reduce the amount of time that he goes away for. You know, so let's say at the moment you've got to take him out for five minutes. In time, you might be able to take him out for four minutes, three minutes, two minutes, one minute, 30 seconds, 10 seconds. Then you might be able to transfer that into a command. You know, like here, and it might break the association. Let me know how you get on now. If you get stuck with that, I'm more than willing to help because it's quite a complex behavior. 
Yeah, the dog called Toast, Tobias. Um, it'll be up in the next couple of days, I promise. I'm going to... The reason they don't go up very often and on time is because they take fucking hours to upload. So like an hour long. And an hour of 1080p is like a gazillion gig. It's not, you know... Uh, mentioned you in a comment. Oh, Tobias, I've just got your comment. Where can I watch this video? I've, I'll link it up to that if I remember. How can I teach puppy to stay put? Do you mean a down stay or a sit stay or a place command or I need some more information, dude? Was it on here or on a different website? No, it's on here, dude. It'll be on the Facebook. It won't be on Facebook directly. It'll be on my YouTube channel, which I'm going to link up for you now. Because if you go and subscribe to it, um, then you'll get a notification when it goes up. Um, how do I find it? My channel. Control C. Hey, Tobias. That link there will take you to my YouTube channel. It'll be on there in the next few days. Oh, this, uh, this video of the dancing dogs going mega viral again. Nine million views, Jesus. Tips for a new man, Ronnie, getting a puppy next year. You know, you know the deal, dude, patience. However, I don't know what other dogs you've had or have. Mouths are fucking mental. All the time. You've, she's only half Mal or Dutch or whatever you want. She's nuts all the time. She's getting up again now. Um, be very prepared for a lot of destruction and a lot of headaches and a lot of biting you. And what do you want it for, Tobias, out of interest? Is it going to be a PP dog? Is it going to do agility? Is it a pet? Because like, the way I'd bring it up is slightly different for each one. Going to do it again. Go. Can one of you tell me which way the comments are? Like, is it that? Because on my camera, it looks like it's that way. I feel like on your camera, it's that way. Had a working line, black German Shepherd who died last year, have a mini schnauzer at the moment. Yeah, so much like the Shepherd, you know, it's training a mile is no different to training any other dog, but you've just got to be a bit more aware that their prey drives generally are going to be a lot higher. Probably got a bit more fight drive, might have a bit of defense. It's basically just a normal dog on speed, isn't it? It's nothing special. But yeah, don't get too caught up in, I'm getting a mile, what do I do? Just be more patient, be aware. You're going to have a lot of headaches. Why is somebody giving me a flower? What the hell's that? Um, you're going to get a ton of headaches. They're incredibly highly strung. So just be patient with it. You'll be fine. Okay, am I caught up? I think I'm caught up. Oh, I want that answer. How can I teach a puppy to stay put? I'm going to go ahead. Comments on my left. Mm, see, Alexia, I agree. My left's this. <laughs> Is that left to you? And my comments there. I do canny sports. Oh, cool. That's really cool. I like that a lot. And agility. We'll try GP, and if she likes it, we'll go down that route. If not, we'll go down a different route. Yeah, I think that's a great idea because you've got to I think people buy a dog and want it to do X. And in reality, the dog's got to be suited for that, for that job. You know, it might hate canny cross. He also might hate PP or GP or find out what he likes, find out what his drives are like, let him develop. When he's young, he or she, take him everywhere, you know, like building sites and diggers and planes and everything. Alexia, yes. Okay, cool. My comments are that way. Yeah, so hit that like button, guys, because Facebook bums me when I um, get more likes. Andy, lol, Mali, I remember my first canine. Yeah, Andy's going to know. They're just an absolute handful. They're no different. They're no different, so don't panic. Just mental. <coughs> Kev, if you're watching this afterwards, I'm sorry that you missed your live feed, and I hope the surgery went well. Mental stimulation and exercise. If she hits Canny Cross, then we'll try something until I find something that she fucking loves and wants to work till she dies. Yep, yeah, bang on, mate. Mental and physical stimulation. If you've got it down, you'll be fine. If you become a lazy bastard, then you're going to want to kill yourself. Mollies are the best tool ever to stop people being lazy. 
Because you get lazy, it's like, oh, I can't be asked to walk the dog today. I can't be asked to train. And then they just destroy your entire house. So you don't want to do it twice. Okay, back to the group. Questions from the group. I think I'm caught up. I'm liking these live stream things. They're cool. It didn't occur to me at all to do them. I was just going to film videos, but this is way more fun. I like the interaction with you guys. We've answered that. We've answered that. You know what? That might be the end, guys. I think we're caught up. I think we are caught up. Protective over food. We've been over that. Jody, you're back. Hey. Jay, will my, will my Doberman be as crazy as a mouse? Um, unlikely. I mean... There are Rottweilers that are crazier than some males. There are Labradors that are crazier than some males. It's just a generalization, though. So males, if you took 100 males, more of them would be very high drive than if you took 100 Great Danes. Um, ultimately, I don't know. I would guess no. I would guess no. I would guess he's going to be much like um, Storm and Ember. Tobias, what is bike jaw? Bike jaw. I guess it's canny cross on a bike. If so, that sounds cool as fuck. I love that you've got a list of uh, sports lined up just in case she hates them. <laughs> That's not a question for here. Jody, how are you getting on? How is your right getting on? Yeah, he's great, man. Uh, we have the odd argument. He's learning slowly. I don't know if you know Kev, who bred him and put all his initial training in, but he did a great job with imprinting, you know, his obedience and stuff. So it was just more of a case of getting him to work for me, teaching him new stuff. You know, he's learning to tactical heal at the moment. He's learning to be around other dogs and not be a fucking maniac that wants to play with everything. Uh, it just takes time. It's the, it's the same for me as if for everyone else, you know. I think people think because I'm a trainer, it's like, oh, well... You, you must you must make really really quick progress. I can only make as much progress as the dog will let me. The joy I've got is that I've got a box of tools to use already. You know, I, I understand micro training and the quadrants of operant conditioning and all that jazz. <laughs> the downside for pet owners is that they've generally got to learn that before they can teach the dog. But yeah, he's doing well, man. Um, his protection's coming on leaps and bounds. Um, drop me an inbox. I'll send you some videos. 37 minutes in. Bike jaw, bike jaw. Still don't ask, pronounce that. Is where you're on the bike, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and you have an attachment that goes on the bike with a line that attached to the headstock of the dog's harness. Oh, so it's canny cross spot on a bike. That's cool as hell. I'm going to have to watch a video of that. Sounds really cool. When we're having tea, Jazz is pushing it. She just sits in front of us and sniffs the food, moving her away constantly, and she just seems to come back. Any ideas? Um, yeah, two ideas. One. Just put her away when you're eating to start with. Because her impulse control is not going to be good enough yet to put her in a, a downstay and she stays there. Two, teach her downstay so she stays there. So you need to teach her like a place command. Um, what I would do is, I'd say you had a dining room where you eat or living room, whatever. Put a bed in the corner. Get her to lay on it. Every five to ten seconds, 20 seconds or 30 seconds, however long she's going to reliably do. You get up, go over, yes, mark it, reward. So it becomes more rewarding for her to be on her bed than it does to be sat like this, sniffing your plate. Because I get it, that's really fucking annoying, trying to eat. But yeah, Jody, you just need to completely, like nothing good ever comes from being near your plate, but lots of good things come from being further away. Is your Rotty Flack? Yes, he is indeed. He's currently laid over there chilling. Fast asleep. He's far easier to have in the house than Kalisa. Oh, Ty, I don't know if you're still watching, but it's all kicking off in the group again. Sorry, everyone else. We have a working dog group from where we chat. <coughs> okay, any more for any more? We're 40 minutes in. Jesus. 39 minutes in. I don't think I have anything to cover. All Musmus group. No, mate. Um... A BVK WhatsApp group. 
However, the Muslims group is awesome. I'm going to link that up as well. So yesterday I linked up Muslims TV page that um, basically a news a news page, I guess, for all the working dog stuff. This is Muslims TV working dog group. It's a group where you can go and interact, and you know people put up polls and people put up who's the best dog and all that shit. It's really good. So yeah, go on there. Twelve of you here right now. If eleven, you asshole. Why have you left? The eleven of you that are here now, go up to that link that's pinned. Put your email in and let me send you cool emails. That's what I want out of this. I'll sit here and give you forty-five minutes of free information. You have to pay me by putting your email in. We'll tag you in some videos of my dog's friend's dog. Yeah, definitely do that, bud. When I try on the bed, should I bring food in with me or just do the get on the bed before we eat with her? Hmm. Not sure what your question is, Jody. Okay, I think I get it. You need to teach it away from meal times first. You know, so the fact that this bed brings me lots of good, tasty food, she's going to want to get on there then. Then you start introducing the meal time bit, you know, where you sit down and have a plate. Oh, it's 12 of you now. The person who didn't hear that a minute ago, go put your name in that box. The link at the top. Put your email in. Um, you've got to teach it. So you bring the meal in. She's going to break a place again then completely because her association is that she wants to be close because that's where the food is. If, however, you teach her that the food only comes when she's on the bed, her food, not your food, then she's going to want to stay on the bed because dogs are a resourceful animal. You know, they're going to want, they're going to want to be where the good stuff happens. So, in short, being sat next to you will be boring as fuck, and being sat on her bread will bring her loads of cool stuff: chicken and bacon and cheese. But don't feed her too much, or she'll get fat. None of my clients have fat dogs. Okay, any more for any more? I'm going to give you guys three more minutes. Because I'm all out of things to talk about, I think. 45 minutes is a long live stream. Mikey, hello. How are you and Elsa and Bud getting on? I assume well. My bull terrier has decided he does like any other dogs no more. Oh, he doesn't like dogs anymore. Okay. What's the best... What? What's the best thing to do? He went like it after he see a dog fight in a park. Um, I assume... Um, hey, Steve, how's it going? I assume what you're saying is that your dog doesn't like dogs anymore and he saw a dog fight in a park. If he saw a dog fight in a park, he has no rational association to that. So it wasn't that that caused it, something else has. Go and buy Grisha Stewart's book called BAT, B-A-T, Behavior Adjustment Training. Um, it's about creating new associations to dogs at distance and then bringing them closer. It's how I train probably 80% of my dog aggressive clients. Any more for any more? Two and a half minutes left. Shun, I hope that answered your question. If you want more detail on that, ping me a message, but we spoke about it earlier on this video. So go and watch it. Um, watch it back if you need more information. She's now fast asleep on her sofa. Guess we have stopped eating. Oh, guess what? We have stopped eating. Twat. <laughs> yeah, she will be because as soon as the food goes, there's nothing interesting happening. That's what I mean. It needs to be interesting. The problem that people have is they put the dog in a place command while they've got food. But nothing good comes from being there. So the dog's like, fuck this. This is shit. I'm going to go back over there and try and get some food off her. So literally just building that association that being over there is more interesting than being here. 19 of you in here. Go put your email in that box. Okay, I'll give you a message anyways, but we'll look at the book you said. Cheers. No worries, mate. Tak, how's it going, bud? Tak, you're not on the email list. You've just joined, but I'm going to harass you personally anyway. Go to that link and put your email in. How to increase your dog's drive. My mini schnauzer has little drive for agility, and I need lots. Uh, 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 sorry, I know what the answer is here. I'm just trying to think of what sort of drive you need for agility. But I, I know a lot of people train agility with a tug, right? You know, as the reward afterwards. We, I think we spoke about this yesterday or the day before. Long story short, put him on a harness or a really thick collar or something, you know, so he doesn't choke himself. Tie him to something, you know, back tie him to a fence or a pole. Or, and then play tug with him, but make him miss the tug a lot. 
if he misses it enough, the frustration goes up, which means the drive builds as well. There's a saying in dog training, frustration builds drive. And it's so true. You do it with a ball on a string if you want, you know, miss, miss, miss. He'll start barking and kicking off and throwing himself around. When he's in a higher state of drive than usual, he wins. And we play Togue, we play Togue, and then he outs and you repeat the game. Over and over and over and over. Hopefully that makes sense, bud. Jay, I was talking about you earlier. Uh, Ty was saying... Oh, scroll up through the comments. You'll see it. You'll see it. Toy drive or food drive? Uh, food drive's trickier, in my opinion, to increase. Just start using higher value reward and make the food become more active as well. Um, but you're building prey drive for food then, really. But as I've just said, frustration builds drive. Alexia Yunka, I've been trying to build drive that way for a few months. Tried a low pole and my dog just loses interest after two or three misses of the toy. Some dogs just have very low prey drive. If your dog's incredibly low prey drive, you'll be able to build it, but very mildly. You know, you're not going to take a dog, like my ground, he has prey drive for small furries, but if you throw a ball, he's like, fuck you, I don't want that ball. I'm never going to be able to build his drive to the same drive that my shepherd has. It's just not happening. So you've got to also be realistic with who your dog is, you know, at, at its core. Katie Edwards, hello. She's super food motivated, but I've been trying to change up my rewards a bit. I think changing your rewards is something that just keeps us happy as humans. You're like, oh, I should change this up. If she wants to work for food, let her work for food. He gets bored of toys after a couple of times. He'll let go and give up like he has ADHD. He's too occupied his environment and too distracted. Start in a lower distraction environment. Might be the living room, bedroom, garden. If you go straight outside and he's already got no drive for this thing, then he's going to be like, I don't want that thing. I think, shit, I want to go and play with that dog. So yeah, start in a lower distraction environment and um, also don't, the problem people have is like, I really want to build drive and then they want to do 20 minute sessions. Just go out and do you know, like 30 seconds, a minute, three minutes and then leave him be, let him go and poddle. Any more for any more? 73 questions tonight. I think that's a pretty good effort. Okay, I think we're done. Are we done? I'll give you another minute or so, just in case we're not done. It's not people to miss out, you know, they've sat and watched, and then they suddenly get a really good question, and they're like, oh, shit, he's going now. I'm here till I'm here. It's uh, 10 to 8 at night. I have nothing interesting to do. Thanks, Jay. I love the emails and the videos. Keep it up. Thank you, Alexia. I'm glad you're enjoying them. I think my cat has more toy drive than him. He's very food motivated. Food motivated. Yeah, Tobias, if he's mega food motivated and doesn't want to play with toys, then train him with food. High value food. Okay, I have a question just to wrap it up. Who is your favorite famous trainer? Put it in the comments below. And I shall see you all tomorrow, probably, for Ask Obsidian episode four. Thank you, Helen. Good night.